Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hall. I'll be your instructor for biology. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't already have this installed in your device, I would like you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Now, exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams. Exams such as the UTME, the post-UTME, WIAC, GCE, IGMB, KCPE, JUPEB, Calbepedia. In the junior sections, we also have the BECE, we have the JSCE, and so much more. Now, you can download the app from www.examguide.com or you visit the Google Play Store to download. Now, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update yourselves on new videos that will be coming up. Now, if you're ready for this class, let's get started. Hello, today we're going to be looking at aquatic habitat. Aquatic habitat. Um, of course, a habitat is actually the natural dwelling place of living organisms. That's what the definition of a habitat is. And um, for now, we have two types of, of habitat. We have the aquatic habitat, and then we have the terrestrial habitat. And today we're going to be looking at aquatic habitat, aquatic habitat. Now, in this particular topic, there are subtopics we're going to be looking at. And these subtopics include, we're going to be discussing definition and types of aquatic habitat. Next on the line, we're going to be discussing in details marine habitat. We're going to be looking at um, uh, definition of marine habitat. We're also going to be looking at some of the zones that are found in marine habitat. We're also going to be talking about characteristic features. We're also going to be looking at organisms that are found there, both plants and animals. We're also going to be looking at the structure of the food chain and factors that affect marine habitat. We're also going to be doing the same for estuarine. We're going to look at the types of um, estuarine we have or brackish water habitat. We are also going to be looking at characteristics. We are also going to be discussing um, organisms that can be found there, both plants and animals. We are going to look at the food chain that occurs in estuarine habitat. And then finally, we are also going to be talking about factors affecting the estuarine habitat. And lastly, we are going to be talking about freshwater habitat. Freshwater habitat, the same thing we did for other um, types of marine habitat, we are also going to do in describing freshwater habitat. We're going to look at types. We're going to look at their major zones. We're also going to be looking at characteristics. We're going to talk about organisms that are found there and some of the adaptive features. We're also going to be looking at um, the food chain that occurs in a freshwater habitat. And then we're also going to be discussing factors, mostly abiotic factors, that affect um, freshwater habitat. Now, like we always know, we're going to be looking at objectives. What are the objectives? Now, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define aquatic habitat. And not only define aquatic habitat, you should be able to mention the types of aquatic habitat. And then number two, <coughs> you should be able to describe marine habitat. Describe it based on characteristics based on organisms that can be found there. We also have um, food chain um, factors that affect it. We'll do the same for um, estuarine habitat, and you should also be able to describe freshwater habitat, freshwater habitat. Now, if you're set, let's take a look at this wonderful topic, aquatic habitat. Now, definition. What is aquatic habitat? Now, by my own definition, aquatic habitat is simply a body of water in which certain organisms live naturally in. A body of water in which you can find living, certain living organisms living there naturally. So that is the definition for aquatic habitat. Now, we have three types of aquatic habitat. Three types. 
we have what we call the marine or saltwater habitat. We have the estuarine or brackish water habitat. And then we have the fresh water habitat. And we will be looking at each of these habitat, habitats, rather, one after the other. First of all, let's look at marine water habitat. Now, another name for marine water habitat is salt water habitat. So if you don't call it marine waters, you can call it salt water habitat. <coughs> now, the reason why it is called salt water habitat is because this marine water habitat is a habitat with high salt content. There is high salt content. And that's why we can call it salt water habitat. Now, we have two main examples of marine habitat. <coughs> they include oceans and seas. Oceans and seas. Now, some examples of ocean we have across the world. We have the Pacific Ocean, which is the largest ocean in the world. We have the Indian Ocean, we have the Atlantic Ocean, and so many other types of ocean. Also, we have some examples of sea in, Nigeria, in, in the world, rather. We have the Boni Sea, we have the Red Sea, we have the China Sea, and so many other examples of sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and so on. Then also, let's take a look at some of the characteristics of marine water habitat or salt water habitat characteristics or you can call them features now number one is salinity number one is salinity now what is salinity we said it is the degree of saltiness or you can say it's the degree of the concentration of salt in a solution the degree of saltiness in a solution or it is the degree of concentration of salt in a solution, okay? So in, in marine water habitat, salinity is usually high. Remember we said we can call it marine water habitat or salt water habitat because of the high salt content, because of the high salt content. Another feature or characteristics of marine habitat is density. Density. Marine habitat has very high density. High density. And that is why most organisms can float in marine water habitat because of the high density. Now next is pressure. The pressure in marine habitat increases with depth. As you keep going down, in the marine water habitat, for instance, an ocean, as you go down in the ocean, getting down to the depth of the ocean, the pressure in that particular part of the ocean is usually very high. Another thing again is size. Size. In fact, the marine water habitat is the largest habitat in the world. The largest habitat in the world. In fact, aquatic habitat is the largest habitat in the world. We, we, we are made to understand that the total uh, um, earth surface, earth surface um, water is about 70% of the total earth surface, okay? So, but marine water habitat is the largest habitat in the world, okay? And then in terms of current, remember we've talked about the first one, which is salinity. That's characteristics. We said salinity is high. We've talked about um, density. We said density is also high. We've talked about pressure, and we said pressure increases with depth. And then also size, we said it is the largest. And number four or number five is current. Marine, ha water, ha marine water habitat has current. And these currents are actually produced by the wind at the surface of the ocean. They have currents that are produced by the wind by, are produced by, by the wind at the surface of the ocean. Another major characteristic in marine water habitat is tides. There is tide. Now, what is tide? Tide simply means the rise and fall of water, of water, the rise and fall of water. So if you're looking at the tide in the ocean, it has to do with the rise and the fall of the surface of the ocean. <clears throat> so there is a tide in 
um, marine water habitat. And it is actually the, uh, it is the, the, the tide is actually due to gravitational effects, gravitational effects of the sun and the moon. It is the gravitational effect of the sun and the moon that brings about the tide in the ocean. Next is oxygen concentration. Oxygen concentration. Now, the concentration of oxygen in the marine habitat decreases with depth. So as you keep going down deep into the ocean, the oxygen concentration reduces. The same thing is also applicable in hydrogen ion concentration. That's another characteristic, hydrogen ion concentration. <coughs> marine habitat is, main, is known to be an it to be it is known to be alkaline in nature so it is alkaline and of course when you're using a ph scale um, what uh, the, the ph range for alkaline solutions is usually more or above seven so you have it between eight and nine so the hydrogen ion concentration of of the ocean using the ph scale is between eight and none then also we have waves waves there is presence of waves in marine water habitat and then light penetration decreases with depth it is due to turbidity the presence of turbidity now what is turbidity turbidity is the degree of transparency of a solution so it means that in a marine water habitat um, turbidity increases with depth and so light penetration decreases with what? Depth. Light penetration decreases with depth. So that is that on characteristics of marine water habitats. So let's take a look at major zones of marine habitats. Major zones of marine habitats. Now the first major zone is the splash zone. The splash zone is actually the area where water splashes on you when the waves break it break at the shore another name for the splash zone is called the supratidal zone supratidal zone we also have the next zone after the splash zone we call that that intertidal zone or you can call it the neritic zone intertidal zone or neritic zone now this particular area in the marine uh, uh, in the saltwater habitat we, in this area, you have high photosynthetic activities. There's high photosynthetic activities, and light penetration is also high. All right? The third one is the littoral zone. The littoral zone. The littoral zone is also known as the subtidal zone. Now, the littoral zone is about 200 meters deep, and there is also abundant sunlight and nutrients. 200 meters deep. Then after the littoral zone, we have the benthic zone. The benthic zone is about 500 meters deep. 500 meters deep. After the benthic zone, we have the abyssal zone. The abyssal zone is about 700 meters deep. 700. And here, temperature is usually low and light penetration is also low. But as you keep going down, the pressure increases. And then after the abyssal, deep, uh, 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 abyssal zone, which is 700 meters deep, we have several 7,000 meters deep, not 700, then we have the aphotic zone. The aphotic zone is the deepest zone, the deepest zone of the marine habitat. And it is over 7,000 meters deep. And this is where they call the floor or the bed of the ocean. And in this particular zone, there is no light, there is no photosynthetic activity, nothing. No light, no light. It is usually very dark. So we have these as the major zones when we are looking at times of, in terms of depth. But if we are looking at um, major zones based on light penetration, based on light penetration. In the marine habitat, the first zone, which is the top zone, is the zone where you have the high, a very high light penetration and high photosynthetic, photosynthetic activity. That is the euphotic zone, the euphotic zone. The second part or the second zone after the euphotic zone 
is the dysphotic zone. The dysphotic zone, the intensity of light penetration is a bit low compared to that of the euphotic zone. And so photosynthetic activity is also what? Reduced or low. And then we have the aphotic zone, which is, of course, the bed of the marine water habitat. And in this zone, there is no light penetration. In this zone, there is also no photosynthetic activities. All right? Now, let's look at some of the organisms that can be found in marine water habitats. Organisms found in marine water habitat. An example of organisms, mostly plant, let's start with that of the plants. We have what we call the diatoms. The diatom. Diatom is a plankton. You can use, most times you might not be able to see them with your naked eye. You see them with the aid of a microscope. Plankton, they are very small. Now, they possess rhizoids for attachment to rocks and air bladders, and they also possess air bladders for buoyancy. Buoyancy simply means the ability to float. So these organisms are very tiny, but they can float in the water. They have what we call rhizoids. These rhizoids are for attachment. We also have algaes. Algaes can be found there. Remember, we have different types of algae. We have the green algaes, we have the red algaes, we have the brown algaes, we have the blue-green algaes, and so many others. Now, we have algaes inside the water. An example of an algae that is found inside the water is the sagasum. Now, these sagasum, they possess chlorophyll for photosynthetic activity. They also have large surface areas for drifting or floating on water. Yes. So they have large, this, uh, large surface area for drifting and floating on marine habitat or on the water. We also have seaweeds. Seaweeds. Now the seaweed, they have, they have what we call hold fast for attachment and they also have air bladder for buoyancy. Now let's, let's take a look at some animals that can be found in the marine water habitat. An example of an animal that can be found in marine water habitat is the shrimps. Shrimps. Now the shrimps, they possess claws. They possess claws for seizing or holding prey for food. Okay, to hold their prey or hold their food. We also have the periwinkles. They can be found also in marine water habitat. Now, the periwinkles, they possess lungs for breathing and they also have food for attachment. They have food for attachment. We also have the starfish that can be found also in the marine water habitat. They possess two feet which help them to hold on to rocks or shores and hard shells which prevent drying up, all right? And they possess hard shells that also prevent them from drying up. And then also we have the cartilaginous fish, the cartilaginous fish. We have examples like the dogfish, we have the shark and so on. These um, um, cartilaginous fish, they have the ability to retain urea in their bodies in order to regulate high salinity is also a way they regulate their internal environment, a process we call osmoregulation or homeostasis, okay? So they carry out this process by retaining their urea in their bodies so that they can regulate the, the, they can regulate the balance between salt and water in their body and also outside of their body. Then in terms of food chain, this is the kind of food chain you're gonna see in a marine water habitat. We have diatoms serving as a producer, and we have zooplankton serving as also producers. And then we have the shrimps. The shrimp is serving as a primary consumer, and bony fishes that feed on shrimps are referred to as secondary consumers. Now, factors that can also affect marine water habitat, they include temperature, they include sunlight, we have wind, we have density. Remember we talked about salinity, turbidity, pH. These are some of the factors that can affect marine water habitat. Now let's move to the next type of aquatic habitat, which is called estuarine habitat, estuarine. Another name for estuarine is brackish water, brackish water. Now estuarine is a body of water 
formed from the mixture of salt water and fresh water. So it is simply a mixture of salt water and fresh water. That's what brackish water or estuarine water is. Now we have two, three main types of estuarine habitat. One is called a delta. We have what we call a lagoon and we have a bay. Now a delta is formed at the mouth of a river before it divides into many channels. Before it divides into many channels and enter into the sea. That is a delta. Then we also have a lagoon. A lagoon is formed when ocean waters enter into, land, into the land through a canal. Ocean water enter into, uh, into the land through a canal where it mixes with fresh water. Remember we said that um, estuarine habitat is a mixture of both fresh water and salt water. And then the bay is formed when a small portion of the seawater enters into the land and mixes with fresh water from the rivers, when it mixes with fresh water from the rivers. Now let's take a look at characteristics of estuarine habitat. What are some of the features that is observed in an estuarine habitat? One of them is fluctuation of salinity. Remember we said it is a mixture of both salt and fresh water. All right. So there is every tendency that there is a fluctuation of what salinity. Now salinity is low in some area of um, estuarine habitat and also high in some other areas. All right. So there is fluctuation. All right. Now the next thing to take note of in estuarine habitat is turbidity. 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 So turbidity in estuarine habitat is usually high during rainy seasons. During rainy seasons. And I've explained turbidity. I said it is the degree of what transparency of a solution. Now turbidity reduces photosynthetic and respiratory activities in most aquatic organisms. It does. All right. Next characteristics is shallowness of water. Please note, um, in terms of size or whatever, um, estuarine water habitat is very shallow and not deep. Remember when we talked about marine water habitat, we said it is over, over 7,000 meters deep. But in estuarine habitat, it is usually shallow. Another characteristic of estuarine hab water habitat is oxygen concentration oxygen concentration. Now, the concentration of oxygen is in estuarine habitat is low due to increased anaerobic, micro anaerobic microbial activities. It's usually low, usually low, because you find microorganisms that respire anaerobically more in estuarine water habitat. And then also level of nutrients. Level of nutrients is high. Level of nutrients in estuarine habitat is high. We have high level of nutrients in estuarine water habitat. And then also, let's take a look at some of the plants that occur in estuarine water habitat. Some of the plants you can observe that occur in estuarine water habitat. An example is still the planktons. An example of the plankton is the diatoms. Remember we said that they possess rhizoids for attachment to the rocks. We also said they possess air bladder for buoyancy. And then we also have in an estuarine water habitat, we have the red mangrove. Red mangrove. In river states, sorry, in Nigeria, where you can find more of estuarine habitat or mangrove swamp habitats is in river state, in Bayasa, in delta state, in Aquaibom, you can see most most of this estuarine water habitats and all that. Now, an example of a plant you can find in estuarine habitat is the red mangrove. The red mangrove, they possess roots which provide support and prevent um, them from being washed away by the water or the tide or whatever. Okay? Also, we have the white mangrove. 
The white mangrove tree has breathing roots for gaseous exchange. They have breathing roots for gaseous exchange. Now, animals that can be found in estuarine water habitats in estuarine water habitat include mud skipper. So we have the mud skipper. It is found in estuarine water habitat, mud skipper. Now the mud skipper possesses fins which it can use for crawling. As you can see on the screen, it possesses screens which it can use for crawling when on land and also for swimming when in water, mud skipper. We also have the mosquito lava. Mosquito lava, they possess breathing trumpets for gaseous exchange. We also have the crabs. The crabs are also found in estuarine water habitats. The crabs can burrow fast into the mud when they come in contact with predators and also with strong waves and tides, okay? Now, some of the food chain you can find in estuarine habitat include diatoms, serving as a producer, shrimps, serving as a, cons a primary consumer, and then fish, serving as a secondary consumer. Factors that can affect estuarine habitat, they include, we have temperature, we have sunlight, we have pH, we have relative humidity, and so on. These are some of the activities, sort of, some of the factors that are, can affect um, estuarine habitat. Now, finally, let's take a look at fresh water habitat. Fresh water habitat. Now, fresh water habitat is a body of water formed from inland waters with little or no salt. Little or no salt. So, if you're comparing fresh waters with marine water habitat, marine water habitat have high salinity and fresh water habitat has very little or no salinity at all. Examples of fresh waters, we have things like the rivers, we have the ponds, we have the lakes, we have the dams, we have the streams, the springs, and so on. These are examples of fresh water habitat. Now, we have different types of freshwater habitat. We have what we call lotic freshwater, and then we have the lentic freshwater. Lotic freshwater and lentic freshwater. Now, lotic freshwater are all running or flowing freshwater. Any water that is running, flowing very fast, any flowing water, as you can see on the screen, any flowing water are referred to as lotic fresh water habitat. An example includes, you can see that in rivers, you can see that in springs, you can see that in also streams. They are always flowing. Also, lentic fresh water habitat. These are, uh, are, are actually fresh water habitats that are stagnant or standing. They don't flow. Okay, they are no longer, they are not running waters. Examples include the ponds, we have lakes, we have dams, and so on. These are lentic freshwater habitats. Now, what are some of the characteristics of freshwater habitat? Number one, salinity. I told you that salinity in freshwater habitat is usually little or no salt. Little or no salinity little or no salinity. Also, in terms of size, in comparison with um, marine water habitat, freshwater habitat is smaller, smaller in size compared to marine water habitat. Next is oxygen concentration. Oxygen concentration is high, mostly at the surface of freshwater habitat. Oxygen concentration is high, mostly at the surface of freshwater habitat. Another thing again you can see is shallowness of water. Shallowness of water. Now when we're talking about shallowness of water, we are also implying about light penetration. Light penetration. Now, um, freshwater habitat has very shallow light, sorry, very shallow, um, shallow waters, okay? But because of the uh, uh, shallowness of the water, light penetration is usually high in freshwater habitat. 
And then also we have the currents. Freshwater habitat also possesses currents, mostly the ones that are flowing or running. So there is a presence of currents which can affect the distribution of gases, salts, and also organisms in freshwater habitat. Now, zones in freshwater habitat. Zones in freshwater habitat. Now, we are going to divide these zones into, um, based on the two types of um, uh, freshwater habitat. Remember, we said we have two types of freshwater habitat. We have the lentic and then we have the lotic. So we're going to be looking at them differently. So we're looking for now major zones in lentic freshwater habitat. Major zones in lentic freshwater habitat. The first um, a major zone is the littoral zone. Please take note, the littoral zone. Now, this is the shallow part of the lentic freshwater habitat. Now, in this zone, there is high light penetration and photosynthetic activities. High light penetration. Then the second zone after the littoral zone is the benthic zone. The benthic zone. Now, this is the deepest part of the lentic freshwater habitat. And there is presence of photosynthetic activities, but light penetration is low compared to that of littoral zone. Light penetration is low compared to that of littoral zone. So in other words, what we are saying, littoral zone is the shallow part, B uh, benthic zone is what? The deepest part in Atlantic freshwater habitat. Now, lotic freshwater habitat. Lotic freshwater habitat. Remember, we said that the lotic freshwater habitat, lotic freshwater habitat is a running water habitat. Now we have two zones there. We have what we call the pool zone, and then we have the rapid zone. Now the pool zone is the zone where, uh, in, in this zone, water is always calm and slow. It is running, but it is not with uh, the, the, the flow or the running waters are not done fast. It's not fast, okay? The current is not much. It's just slowly moving, all right? And then we have the second zone, which is called the rapid zone. Now, in this zone, water flow is very what? Fast. Water flow is very fast. The pool zone, water flow is always calm and slow. While in rapid zone, water flow is very what? Fast. Now, what are some of the organisms that are found in freshwater habitat? Mostly looking at plants. Now, the plants we can find there, one of them is water lily. Water lily. Now, water lily, they possess air bladder. They also have expanded shape and lightweight, which keeps them afloat in freshwater habitat. We also have spirogyra. You can see a lot of it in freshwater habitat. We also have the water lettuce. Water lettuce are also found in um, freshwater habitat. And these water lettuce, they possess hairs on their leaves to help them trap air and stay what afloat. They trap air and also stay afloat. Now, what about the animals that can be found in freshwater habitat? Now, animals that can be found in freshwater habitat includes the tilapia fish, tilapia fish. Now, the tilapia fish, they have what we call swim bladders, and it helps them for buoyancy, to stay afloat. They also possess gills, okay? They possess gills, which is mainly for gaseous exchange. You can also see ducks in freshwater habitat. And ducks, they usually possess webbed feet, which they use for movement, both in water and also on land. And they have beaks. Now, their beaks are called serrated uh, beaks. They are called serrated beaks. Now, these beaks are used for sieving food. They are called, uh, uh, um, they are called um, filter feeders. Dog is an example of a filter feeder or a macrophagous feeder. So they feed through sieving, through sieving, a process known as sieving. All right. Then we also have hydra can also be found in freshwater habitat. Now let's take a look at food chain that can occur, a food chain that can occur in freshwater habitat. We have spirogyra, which serves as a producer. 
we have tadpole. Tadpole is also found in freshwater habitat. And this tadpole feeds on spirogyra. And the tadpole is a primary consumer. We have the carps, which feeds on the tadpole, serving as the secondary consumer. We also have the kingfisher feeding on the carps and the kingfisher serving as the tertiary consumer. Factors that affect freshwater habitats. Now, these factors include, we have temperature, we have sunlight, we have wind, we have rainfall, we have turbidity, and then we have pH. Temperature, sunlight, wind, rainfall, turbidity, and pH. These and so many other factors that affects freshwater habitat. Now, let's take a look at um, some exam guide questions as regards um, aquatic habitat. Let's look at just very few. All right, we have about eight questions here, but let's pick very few of them. The first one says, which of the following organism is mainly found in marine habitat? We have looked at some of the organisms found in marine habitat, tortoise, A, we also have the tilapia fish, no. B, we have the achantina. Ar Ar and then D, we have the dogfish. Remember, we talked about cartilaginous fishes, of which I give examples as shark and dogfish, mostly in marine water habitat. So the correct option is D, all right? Then moving to the next one, they said in a typical freshwater habitat, the edge, okay, the edge of the stream, the edge of the stream, that is the shallow part of the stream or pond, constitutes what? Constitutes what? We just finished talking about major zones. Mostly the correct answer can be found in the lentic, uh, sorry, major zones of lentic freshwater habitat. And the correct one, which is at the edge and that is shallow, is the littoral zone. Remember we said we have two, we have the littoral zone and the benthic zone. So the correct answer there is B, with its littoral zone. And then also they said a freshwater pond may contain A, is it tadpole, water boatman, leeches, and crabs? B, is it water beetle, shrimps, water snail, and water bug? C, is it water lily, fresh fish water, scorpion, Okay, fish, scorpion, and dragonflies, dragonfly and lava, dragonfly lava rather. And D, they said pond skater, water lily, shark, and mosquito lava. The correct option is C, water lily. We have um, the dragonfly lava. We also have the scorpion. They can be found in fresh, around fresh water habitat. Fish water scorpion can be found in freshwater habitat. Number four question, which of the following organism is not found in marine habitat? Not found. Not found in marine water habitat. The correct option to this question is option D. Tilapia fish. Shark can be found in marine water habitat. Snails also. There are different types of snails. Snails can be found there. Um, shrimps also can be found in marine water habitat, but not the tilapia fish. Tilapia fish is mainly a freshwater organism, aquatic organism. And then number five, they said the main ecological problem facing intertidal organism is, the correct answer is flotation. 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 And then number six, Organisms living in an estuarine habitat, this is the last question, organisms living in an estuarine habitat are adapted to, A, is it withstand wide fluctuations in temperature, B, is it feed only on um, phytoplankton and dead organic matter, C, is it survive only in water with low salinity, and D, is it withstand wide fluctuations in salinity, wide fluctuations in salinity. The first one said we stand wide fluctuations in temperature. Now we are talking about estuarine habitat. The correct answer is wide fluctuations in salinity. With these fluctuations in salinity we were looking at. 
and not fluctuations in temperature. So the correct option here is D. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using your exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can also learn particular topics of interest with different modes like study mode, uh, mock mode, and even practice mode. It, is also, it also has other features that makes learning very fun. Now, it is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels, hit the notifi notification bell, and share the videos to your loved ones and friends that will benefit from it. Bye for now.